you are literally self-sabotaging yourself by following mainstream creator advice. However, there is a small minority of creators who are carving out an incredibly lucrative career for themselves by doing the exact opposite of what most people preach. I've been a professional photographer for the last six years, and to be honest, most of the people that I knew when I was first getting started aren't even doing full-time photography anymore. Now, this isn't to throw shade or anything. Some of them quit because they lost interest or they got burnt out, but the majority of them quit because they weren't able to create a sustainable living. Now, again, nothing wrong with that, but it just goes to show that this is a lot more difficult than most people make it out to be, and followers are not always the answer. But I'm gonna be honest, I would actually be one of those people who quit if it weren't for what I'm about to show you in this video. I mean, looking back, it's no wonder that 85% of photography businesses fail by year three when you just look at how they operate it, and it was one of them. But lucky for you, you're not just gonna be another statistic, because in this video, I'm gonna reveal the top five pieces of commonly accepted advice that are blatantly wrong so that you can sniff them out, and most importantly, be on the road to success for the long haul. So for the first full year or so of my career, I believe full-heartedly that people should hire me just because I'm good and that my work should speak for itself. And as much as I wish this were true, unfortunately, it's not. I mean, I bought into this pipe dream that I could just post my work onto Instagram and eventually somehow the algorithm would magically show it to my dream client. And they would not only want to work with me, but they'd reach out and they'd offer me thousands of dollars in just like one email exchange. Like I literally thought that I could just post a few things and then brands would be willing to pay me like three grand or five grand. And as you probably have found out, that is just not the case. Now, I will say that I did eventually start getting more inbound leads, but it wasn't until after about two years of consistently publishing my work literally every single day and also building the connections on the side. And before that, it was literally just me sending cold DMs and cold emails and hoping someone would take a chance on me. So while having high quality work is absolutely crucial, it's not always the most important factor when it comes to getting consistent job. You need to know how to market yourself, how to network, how to make some something valuable that a client would actually be willing to pay for. And that begs the question, well, where do most photographers try to market? And the answer is typically Instagram, which brings me to the second piece of bad advice. So for the first probably two years or so of my career, I focused almost entirely on Instagram. Like I would do some outreach here and there just to make sure I could pay the bills, but the vast majority of my time was spent creating, optimizing, and trying to grow my account to 100K just so I could look legit. I mean, I'd go as far as doing paid giveaways. I would do follow for follow. I'd even do paid shout outs on bigger accounts just to try to grow my account. And like I said, I did eventually start getting inbound leads after about two years of being consistent, but there were two problems. The first problem was eventually I realized how to create content that got a lot of engagement and a lot of viewership. However, that did not translate to money. And in fact, I was actually spending money to grow my account and I had no idea how to monetize it. So I was focusing on things like likes, followers, engagement. I was in engagement pause. I was doing all these things that looked good from a social media metric point of view, but really didn't translate to any kind of business result. So I ended up realizing that all of these metrics mean absolutely nothing if you don't know how to convert the attention that you're generating into actual paid deals. And one of the best ways I've found to do that is with a website because it makes you look more professional. You can curate your portfolio and your case studies in one place. And most importantly, it allows you to create a real sales argument as to why somebody should invest any kind of money working with you. Most of the people I talk to either don't have a website, they just rely on Instagram, or if they do have a website, it's more of a portfolio piece as opposed to a sales asset to actually generate leads and generate sales. And if either of those are the case, you really need to focus on making a well-rounded website that's designed to sell. And if you want to see an example of what that could look like, you can check out my website, creatorco.com. I'll leave a link in the description. But that brings me to the second problem that I realized, which was as I grew my account, as I got more attention, I got plagued by the exact same problem that literally every creator I've ever talked to gets. And that is the free collab offer. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, basically this means that a company is going to offer you free product, a affiliate commission, free stay, free trip, something like that. Basically anything that's not a paycheck for your hard work. And you've probably even seen the Instagram pages blowing up about here's how I got a free trip to Bali or here's how I got a three night free collab at this hotel. That's what I'm talking about. Now this brings me to the next piece of bad advice, which is if I do enough free work, eventually I will get paid. And unfortunately, this thought process is just flawed in so many ways. And honestly, it makes me sad when I see people post like, hey, I just got a $6,000 collab with this brand. But in reality, it was just that they stayed for three nights at this hotel. It cost two grand and they didn't get paid a cent. So if you don't care about creating a sustainable career and you just want a free vacation, like great. But if you actually want to create a sustainable career for the long term, that's an excellent way to sabotage your brand. Now, there are a few select scenarios where it does make sense to do work for free. And I'm going to go over those in just a second. But before I do, let's just put ourselves in the shoes of the brand. So what do they think and what do they perceive when they hear someone being willing to do stuff for free? Well, number one, they're going to think that you don't actually value what you do. Number two, maybe what you do isn't actually valuable at all. And number three, because what you do is not valuable and because you have not 
charge them to work with them before, then they're never going to be willing to pay you in the future. Now, I know a lot of people probably would just hear that and they'd be like, well, maybe I'll just work for free to create this relationship with them and eventually they'll pay me. But unfortunately, that is just not true. Trust me when I say this, if you start a business relationship with a discount or something for free, they are going to expect that for the duration of the business relationship and they're never going to be willing to pay you full price. I mean, think about it. Brands will pay tens, sometimes even hundreds of thousands of dollars to content agencies that actually value their work. So it's not a budget issue or a price issue. It's actually a value issue. Now, again, I'm not saying don't ever do work for free. In fact, most of my main clients have come from free work up front. However, I do it much differently than most people talk about. So there's really only two strategic scenarios where it makes sense to actually do this work for free. And there's got to be an equal exchange of value on the business front, not on the commodity front. So if you're doing work for free just to get a free stay, a free trip, a free product, that's a commodity. That doesn't make any sense. Never do that. But if you're doing it in exchange for business value, maybe it's a connection, maybe it's a case study, maybe it's something else, then that's when it makes sense. And the key here is you've got to make sure that you have this agreement up front before you ever accept the gig. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. So before you ever take on a project for free, ask yourself this question. Why am I doing this job for free? And again, there's only two reasons that you would. The first one is if you realize that doing this work for free up front will allow you to get brand approved. So a lot of the bigger brands, you have to be approved in order to be a paid vendor. So if you approach the brand, you have a conversation, you understand what content they're missing, what content they need, where they want to use it. And you have an equal understanding that as long as you create content that meets the expectation that they'll want to use it in a certain use case and they will approve you to be a brand approved vendor, then and only then would you agree to be able to do the work for free. So the exchange of value here is that you do the work for free up front, but you get to be brand approved, which means you can work for that brand basically in perpetuity. Now, the second reason you would maybe want to do some work for free up front is if you realize that working with the company will get you a success case study in the future that you can leverage as a sales asset. So you want to ask yourself, can you realistically get this company a success case study in a relatively small amount of time? And then more importantly, can you use that as leverage to be able to charge more, get better clients or whatever in the future? So typically this is if company just has terrible content up front and you can come in and make a quick switch. Or if they just don't have access to a video, you give them a video and they increase their conversion rate, something like that. This is not something you would want to do with somebody like a Nike where you can't see that tangible case study up front. Now, the exchange of value here would obviously be the case study of success, but also a written endorsement from the brand that they enjoyed working with you and actually saw success. So those are the two scenarios, either getting brand approved or getting a case study. If you ask yourself, why am I doing this work for free? And the answer is anything other than those two, then just don't take the job. Now, at this point, you probably realize that there's a common theme that making a living as a content creator has just as much, if not more, to do with your business skills as it does with your content skills. And a lot of this stuff has kind of like a sales and marketing undertone. And no, I just said sales. Sales is a bad word. Creators hate sales. And trust me, I was there as well. But I promise you, it wasn't until I learned how to do sales over Zoom and actually bit the bullet on it that my business skyrocketed and I was able to charge much higher rates than I ever had before. So remember when I said that clients weren't just reaching out, offering me like 3000 over an email? Well, what would typically happen is that I would send an email to the brand. If I was lucky, they would respond and ask me for my rates. And then I would spend the next six hours trying to break down how much I should charge per photo, per video, per project. Sometimes it was a day rate, whatever it was. I'd break it down over an email. And if I felt really fancy, I would make a proposal with like multiple pages where I would detail out this entire project and then I would send it off. And then guess what would happen? It was either crickets or we don't have the budget. So after a few too many times of that, I realized I basically had two options. Either one, I continue doing that and I just hope and scrape for crumbs and eventually maybe somebody will want to pay me. Or two, I could suck it up. I could get over my fear of sales. I could actually learn the skill set of high ticket sales and then eventually be able to charge significantly more than I was charging currently. And to be honest, I absolutely did not want to pick the second option, but I realized it was kind of my only option. So reluctantly, I did choose option two and then I promptly went zero for 27 on my next 27 sales calls. So I mean, if you can do better than 0 for 27, you're already doing better than me. But here's the deal. The first one that I closed, my 28th call that I took, I closed for $5,000, which was over double what I had ever charged in my life. And since then, I've almost always gotten a client on a phone call before pitching them. And that trick alone has allowed me to 4X my pricing because most creators won't do it. And this leads me to the last thing that's sabotaging your business. And to be honest, it's the reason that 85% of photography businesses fail by year three. And that is this just misconception that your success should be immediate. I mean, it's easy to just look on Instagram and see thousands of examples of amazing photographers and videographers. And then you start comparing yourself to them and how much they're making or what kind of clients they're working with. But what you don't realize is that yes, these creators are extremely good at creating sales arguments, creating content, creating 
stuff that actually works, but it didn't happen overnight. See, the algorithm is actually designed to show you the best content in the world. Like that's literally what it's there for. So what you are being fed is the top 1% of 1% of content in the entire world. So what that does is it gives you an unrealistic perspective of what success looks like because you don't see the four years before what you see on that one post. Like for example, I'm making this video right now, but I've been doing photography full time for six years. And if you were around in 2018 when I was doing it, first of all, I wouldn't be making this video because I wouldn't know any of this stuff. But secondly, I would have a very different career path than I do right now just because of my knowledge gap. I mean, I personally expected the success trajectory to look a lot like this, just up into the right straight. But unfortunately, it looks a lot more like this. And many of the people that you see on Instagram, on YouTube, including myself, have been at this for years. I mean, like I said, my first 27 sales calls I took were complete flops. The first 100 emails I sent, I got no response. And then when I finally did get a response, it was just that they're not interested and they wanted me to stop emailing them. My first brand deal I did was for 200 bucks. So if you compare where you're at right now with where I'm at or where some of these other creators are at, it's just an unfair comparison. What you actually need to do is compare where you're at right now to where they were at at this same point in their career. So if you're just starting, compare yourself to where I was when I was first starting, where I was going over 27 on the sales calls. And then you realize, wait, maybe I'm not that bad. Maybe this is just normal. So all that to say, when you reframe the idea of success in your mind, where it's not going to be immediate, but if you're consistent over time, then it is inevitable, then it just becomes a much more pleasant experience because you're not just hating on yourself all the time for why you aren't where you want to be. Now, all that to say, there are ways to shortcut the learning curve. And I actually help people do that by mentoring creators that are doing between three to 5,000 a month and helping them to scale their business to 10 to 15,000. So if you're interested in how that could look, you can schedule a free game plan call at the link in the description below and we'll walk you through it. So now that you know what not to do, make sure to watch this video here where I'll give you the exact blueprint on how to make content creation your career.